Hey my beautiful creative friends, today we are going to paint this soft and dreamy iris painting. It's a little one, it's a short exercise, it's loose, it's fun, it's joyful, so let's dive right into the painting. Hey everybody, today I'm going to be painting for you a bearded iris using just a size 10 round Princeton Heritage and I have here my 10 by 7 Amedan watercolour paper 100% cotton cold press. This is what it looks like. I'm just getting a sheet off it and we are going to paint this bearded iris here which is so gorgeous. Just a purpley pinky one with a yellow center. Very easy going. It won't be too difficult. Just paint with me. Let's get some let's get real loose. All right. So what we'll be doing is just spraying my paints down. And all my paints and brushes and all my supplies can be found in the description below. And we're going to start with this gorgeous, um, very light petal that we see at the top. So for the light pink petals, I'm just using a very diluted wash of my dirty pink water here. If you don't have already some dirty pink water, just use Opera Rose with lots and lots of water. And even just maybe a touch of lem lemon yellow, touch. Okay, so let's go straight into it. I'm going to, oh my gosh, look, I've already got become so messy here. This is what happens when you paint loose, paint messily, splatter some paint. So I'm just going to dab that with some tissue, no fuss. This is what happens when you use 100% cotton paper. It's very easy to just lift any kind of accidents away. Okay, so... I'm just going to paint the one iris, okay, one giant iris. So as you can see, I'm just using this brush and creating like a curly, wiggly, wriggly shape with this first left, left hand side petal. And then I'm going to just grab a little bit of mineral violet and then dropping some of that into parts of the petal to create like, you know, just like a darker shadowy color. A bit of burnt umber into that so that it becomes a bit smokier and warm, slightly warmer as well. So just that gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, so. Actually, I just realized something. Okay, never mind. Um, next one, we will just do this, the other side petal. So just same thing, just find making a shape and just wriggling your brush to create that curly, um, jaggedy edge of that, leaving some white space here and there. And then same thing, just adding, just dropping a bit of that mineral violet purple, touch of burnt umber to, and even on the top in the sides. Okay, so I'm just looking at my reference photo, which if you are my Patreon, you'll be able to download and see what's happening. Uh, just a Patreon perk that I have for you. I'm going to grab my gamboge and a bit of yellow and gamboge and just putting some yellow into the center here. Touching a little bit, just touching that the petal a bit. If it doesn't touch you, like you see what I did, I just made it touch a little bit. Okay, I want to just brighten things up a bit. So I'm grabbing some of my permanent rose, which is a pink. And I'm, all, I'm dropping it here and there as well. So what I love about painting irises is that, you know, you really can just make this your own creation. I'm just going to darken the middle here a little bit, just like my reference photo. Just feeling the need to create a bit more depth and dimension, dropping some burnt umber here and there in the edges. Okay, now I'm going to turn my brush around and I'm going to just 
sweep some lines from the center up. Okay. Beautiful. So now I have my top petals kind of done. Hang on, not yet. I'm going to just drop a little bit of yellow just into the bottom here. Okay. Now I'm going to now create the beard and this beard is actually a very dark beard. So I'm going to use dioxazine purple, a lot of it, which I don't really have much left. <laughs> and maybe I just add a bit of that mineral violet too. Then I'm going to add burnt umber and add a red. So I'm going to add that permanent rose so that it just all kind of like matches up a little bit, right? And more purple, more purple. So now I have this dark purple here. So I'm just going to touch the yellow and just pull out a really nice fat beard. Um, and I'm just going to put in some of that Permanent rose. And then the rest of it just with water. Just to leave a little highlight there. Although my reference image does not have a highlight in the middle, but you know, when you paint watercolor, it's always nice to leave a tad of highlights here and there. And then with that same mix, I'm gonna pull out this uh, kind of like its arms. really saturated permanent rose and then one on the other side maybe more permanent rosy and maybe a tad of mineral violet so just i don't know keep your marks nice and loose okay now i'm just going to dry my brush and I'm going to lift some of the color up from here because I feel like it's gone a little bit too dark and I want a nice contrast between the top petals and the bottom petals. So it's just lifting a bit of that color. And already I think it looks really nice. It's got a beautiful sort of uh, organic Irish shape. So I'm gonna now while everything is still a bit wet, get some green going. So I've got my sap green. And if I like, I could put a touch of indigo and maybe even a touch of that red in there. I'm just gonna pull down a stem from here. So you can imagine from the center of this iris, the stem will come down. And I have it on a slight angle because I kind of like doing that. And then from here, I'm also gonna pull, okay, so the stem's just gonna be a bit fatter, right? Because this is quite a large iris. So I'm going to also pull up like a little um, bud from behind here. So imagine, I'm not going to join this bit because it looks a bit awkward and ironistic if I join. So what I'm going to do is basically just pull out that same green. And from here, from just behind, I'm going to use a bit of palm rose and a bit of that same mixture there to pull out a bud, a rose, a little um, iris bud, which you saw me do is just one stroke, two stroke, leaving a little bit of white space. And then maybe just join it up a little bit, just barely touching it, just super touching it there. And there we have that little bud. That was very quick. Um, basically, you can leave it as this and then let it dry and that's your iris. Or you can have a bit more fun now and if you want to play around, you can add some really fun color. So I've got a little neon palette here. It's Lumi Accent Color. I'll link the Amazon link in the description below. And I like, love this palette because, well, it's neon. It's got really some fun neon colors. So. Um, at this point, I want to play with a bit of this orange. This neon orange is always super fun. So I'm going to just drop that neon orange into the top petals here. And it's quite dry, so it might bloom. 
this part, but it's, it's okay. I think, you know, when it comes to just fun, wet on wet stuff, I'm not too fussed about waiting for the whole thing to dry, blah, blah, blah. And then maybe this darker orange in the middle there. All right, so I'm quite happy. What I wanna do now is maybe play with some splatter. Shall we do that? So I'm gonna grab um, this pink, this neon pink, and a nice wet brush. So obviously I sprayed this down and I got nice and wet. I just get another random brush and I'm just gonna splatter some this pink into the petals and also a little bit wherever you like. If you don't like the splatters to get to hit your flower, you can always cover it. But I don't mind just doing a little bit of that. And of course, at this stage, you can leave it again, you know, if you like, or if you want to play a little bit more, if you're not, if feeling you're not done yet, you just want to paint some more. Uh, grab a bigger brush, uh, or you can keep it with your size 10. I'll just use my size 10 actually. Stay the size 10, and I'll just dip my, my brush in just water. And I'm, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to, you see how those pink splatters, and maybe touch, slightly touch the petals or the flower, the, the, the object that you painted, and just blur it out to the sides, I mean, to the background. And this is, this is you know, as, as fun, as expressive you want to be. So what I've done is, you know, this sort of like, uh, kind of watery, splattery, expressive upwards, or you can just wet the whole thing if you like or you just do what I'm doing, which is basically adding a soft, dreamy, fun ex background to this whole thing. Whoosh. There we go. All right, so, and then while everything is still wet in the background, Maybe we can have even more fun. Get your um, uh, neon watercolor ones again. And we're gonna just tap some of that orange into the wet background. So when you splatter into wet, it totally looks different. Oh my God, how fun, how cute. And then you can leave it or, you know, keep messing around because right now I just feel like I want to blend this petal in uh, a little bit more. And I just love how a bit of the flower is bleeding into the background. And that is, ladies and gentlemen, the magic and the fun and the looseness of watercolor. Um, every time I sit down to paint in watercolor, I honestly do not have a goal in mind. I just start playing and I just let my intuition lead me into where I wanted to be. This was meant to just be a simple straight on iris painting, but then um, now, now it's to something totally different. So there you have it. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed painting this. Consider joining my Patreon. I have two tiers. The first one is all of these tutorials ad-free, early access, and you will get to download the reference photo of my painting. And then there's the higher tier where we get to meet live, you get a bonus tutorial. It's, it's rad and it's fun in there. So, um, and also there's a community where we get to chat and get to know each other a little bit better. That's all on my Patreon. Otherwise, thank you for um, painting with me here in my channel and I hope to see you in the next video.